Well, hello everyone, my name is Zwigo and welcome to Pokemon Unbound. So many of you guys have been asking me to make a video on this game and I'm finally doing it. And to experience the game as it should be, I'm not going to be doing a challenge for this one. I'm just going to be showcasing the game to you guys and telling you about the story and the difficult fights that I had. Just like I did in my Pokemon Team Rocket Edition video. This game has its own very, very unique story that's all about a Hoopa and the Boreas region. It has its own very unique set of characters as well, so no recycles like Red or Brendan or whatever. Let's go over some features of Pokemon Unbound real quick as well. They have their own custom soundtrack and I'm just vibing to this all the time. It is so much fun fun to listen to. You even have character customization so you can choose your hairstyle, what you look like and stuff like that which is also a very very nice feature. Pokemon up until generation 7 are in this game as well so if you love Sword and Shield I'm sorry but those Pokemon aren't in the game as of right now. The graphics in this game are unreal because they are updated from the normal Fire Red which makes it feel like you're not actually playing a ROM hack but a totally different Pokemon game that Game Freak never even brought out. You also have a difficulty setting which is something I really enjoy because I don't want to get swept every single match I go into but I also don't want it to be too easy. The HMs in this game are not required to be taught to your Pokemon. From the moment that you get the HM you can just use it outside of battle so you don't have to waste any move slots. There is a lot to cover in this game so I'm just going to jump right into the gameplay. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit that subscribe button if you have not done that already. Let's try and aim for 6,000 likes for Pokemon Unbound because this game is absolutely amazing and let's just jump right into it. The game starts off with a little bit of lore talking about a war that has been going on in the Boreas region and the Kalos region and of course the ultimate weapon that was used in that storyline of Kalos. You know that thing that Lysander wanted to use to explode the world and stuff? Yeah, that thing is back. But to end this war, they summoned Hoopa, and with all of his hoops, he transported the Kalos army back to Kalos, and then all of the events from Kalos unfolded, so the king used the weapon Floet left him, but we all know that story already. But the war was far from over after that, because Hoopa actually attacked the Borean kingdom, which caused the Borean king to stand up, capture Articuno, Zabdos, and Moltres, as well as some Arceus plates, in order to seal away the dark power from Hoopa and turn it into its normal form. We then go 16 years into the future and we see a man standing on top of a bridge throwing a Pokeball in the water and talking to his Arceus. You know, just your regular midnight stroll. He says to Arceus that he can leave, so that's exactly what he does. And then we cut to a clip to a guy on a beach. Hoopa actually arrives on that beach and the guy of course finds him. And then he said, it is time for the eternal flower to bloom once more. We all know what that means, right? We then get to choose our character and I'm gonna go with a black outfit and a blue hairstyle because I think black and blue fit together quite nicely. We then name ourselves Zwiggo as always and I jump right into the difficulty setting. I'm going to be picking difficult because I didn't want it to be too easy but not too hard either on my first playthrough. I might try this game another time with like the insane difficulty or maybe just try the Elite Four on the insane difficulty. Just let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. We then wake up in our bed and immediately get thrown into a portal by Hoopa. And we immediately get thrown into the evil team's hideout. They knock me out and put me in imprisonment and they also say that there is another guy here. While we're unconscious in imprisonment we see that Hoopa comes up to us with his trainer from on the beach and he explains that Hoopa cannot travel through his rings anymore and that he is now his rightful trainer. But it does seem like Hoopa Hoopa doesn't really want to obey him. After the guy leaves, we explore around a little bit and we find our rival. And we're going to be naming him YouTube just for the bands. It appears that he lives in the same town as us. And he of course wants to escape with us, but there is one exit and it's blocked by a shadow 
grunt. As we go up to the grunt, we try to persuade him to go out of the way, but he throws out his Pokemon and we are forced to leave. This is the moment where we find a cage that has three Pokemon in them, and these are the starter Pokemon choices that you can choose from. You free them, and you have a choice between Gibble, Beldum, and Larvitar. While Beldum is my favorite of the three, I am going to go with Gibble because Garchomp is just an absolute beast. It also tells you the ability of your Pokemon straight away, which is a very, very cool feature as well. Makes resetting a lot easier if you want a good nature. I name my Gibble Jaws, go back to the door with my rival, win a double battle with him against the Shadow Grunt, and you're not gonna tell me that these guys' outfit isn't the coolest. So after beating up the Shadow Grunt, YouTube actually attacks the Grunt with a bite from his Larvitar, and now we can finally proceed through the hideout. We then go to a cutscene where the Grunt is telling his boss that we have escaped, and he isn't too happy about this. One of the admins is here too, his name is Marlon. That's the guy in the red outfit, which is the coolest outfit in the entire game. He sends him on a mission to retrieve a package of some sort, and then he orders his Houndoom to drag away this grunt because he failed to contain us. We arrive in our hometown once again and meet up with our rival and the professor of this region, Old Man Log. YouTube tells us that he has been running errands for this professor for a couple of years now. The professor does his normal, ooh, I'm the professor and I need your help talk, but before we get into it, we have to fight our rival. And I'm pretty sure that with a Gibble with this moveset, it's basically impossible to beat this Larvitar, so we automatically lose, even though we burn him. After the battle, Professor Log congratulates us with our new Pokemon and this fine battle, but YouTube doesn't really seem to like Professor Log too much, so he immediately scrams. After that, the Professor asks us to pick up a package for him down at the Pokemart in Bellantown. We accept and go there immediately, but we see that a Shadow Grunt is threatening the clerk to get the same package that we are trying to get. After the clerk refuses, he throws out his Sneasel, orders him to steal the package, and tries to leave. But we, of course, try to stop him by having a Pokemon battle, but after defeating him, he still leaves with the package. We then see a cutscene with Marlin, he asks if the package was received properly, the Grunt answers yes, and they head off because their plan is about to unfold. A little bit further on, we see that he is some summoning Articuno and in the package were a bunch of Master Balls, so he uses one of them to capture, of course, Articuno. As Marlon leaves, he spots me and he tells me to get out of his way, so he orders one of his Shadow Grunts to fight me. After defeating him, we get the package back, but of course without the Master Balls. We go back to Professor Log to report, and he isn't too happy about this. We tell him that they used one of the Master Balls to capture Articuno, and he says that we are in great danger. So he orders me to go to Dresco Town to go ahead and talk to one of his friends who knows a lot about the Borean region's history. He then gives us a Pokedex, some Pokeballs, a town map, and a package that we have to deliver to YouTube with all of the same stuff that we just got in it. So after traveling through some icy caves, we finally find YouTube. And of course, before we can deliver the package, we have to battle him once more. But since we still only have a Gibble, we absolutely get destroyed by his new Pokemon Swine up with powder snow. But to get past him, I'm going to be capturing myself a new team member in Sfeel and name him Bali, of course. After getting him up with Gibble, I can easily take out Swine up with two water guns, do some very decent damage against Larvitar with a water gun, then Sfeel goes down and I take down the Larvitar with a metal claw from Gibble, and that's that. After the battle, he gives us some Chesto Berries and tells us that the first gym leader loves to use Sleep Powder. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to that. So I arrive in the next town and go to the gym immediately. We see that there is some weird fog in the gym, but we're not gonna talk about that. And as we jump right into the battle, we get absolutely destroyed. Like, it's not even close. I can't even put a dent in his Pokemon. So I decide to grind up a little bit more and evolve my Gibble into a Gibbite at level 24. So I also decide to capture a Zubat, which is going to be very good in the first gym because most of its Pokemon are weak against poison or flying. I also capture a female Combi because once again, this thing will resist a lot of the moves that the gym can throw at me. I name it Queen Bee and go to the 
the grinding house in the first city. After about 20 minutes of grinding, my Zubat evolved into a Golbat, and my Combi evolved into a Vespiquen. Since my Gabite and Sfeel are both level 32, I decide to grind Golbat and Vespiquen up to the same level, since the gym leader just levels up with you. After this, it's quite easy to win. We can take down Gloom with a wing attack and two air slashes from Vespiquen. He then sends out a Weedle, but since there is a fog hanging around this gym, I miss about five of my moves. Eventually, Golbat takes out the Floet with a Poison Fang, and Vespiquen takes out Weedle with an Air Slash. And with that, we have our first Gym Badge, and the cops come along to, of course, roll up the gym because there's been some shenanigans going on here. They jump into the lake, and the police go after them. We then finally find our acquaintance here, and he tells us about the Boris region, and, of course, everything we saw in the intro. Then a boy called Jax walks in, and he reports that he has seen the shadowy figures heading to Cinder Volcano, probably to capture Moltres. So Jax goes ahead and gets Professor Log. We all decide that me and Jax have to take down this evil team by going to the volcano, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. At the top of the volcano, we see that they have summoned Moltres and captured it with a Master Ball. As they try to leave, Jax stands in their way, but Marlon comes along and holds him down, causing the others to be able to leave. I then decide to team up with Jax and go after them through the volcano. After almost reaching the exit, we finally catch up to them, and this moron uses Shadow sneak on a Staravia. They battle it out a little bit and Jax tells him that they have to stop their evil scheme but Marlon says that it's not evil what they're doing here. Ivory, which is the other team admin, then says that he will never understand and attacks Jax. They then spot me and Marlon wants to fight but Jax gets up and tells me that we have to have a double battle with them. So I pick my three best Pokemon and jump into the fight. But this battle was an absolute joke, they couldn't even take down one of my Pokemon and their Pokemon were very very weak, so we easily win, they then decide to retreat, and we head back to Arthur and Professor Log. They tell us that there is only one legendary bird left, which is Zabdos, but they send me to Mount Thunderclap to try and save Zabdos, and Jax has to go to Route 9 to pick up the bottle where Hoopa was once sealed in. We decide to go back to the volcano where I pick up a Salandit. But I just couldn't find one with the right nature, so I kept on capturing them, but they are very rare to find as females. So I decide to capture a male in a female, go to the daycare which I found along the way, and then hatch some eggs, and I find one with a minus attack plus special attack nature, which is exactly what I need. I name it Sassy and add it to the team, and after that my Golbat evolves into a Crobat. I get rid of Poison Fang and learn it Cross Poison, and then head on to the next town, where we have to take out some thugs where we get a bicycle from. This is what they call side missions in this game and there is a whole bunch of them and they're very fun to do because you always get a very satisfying reward. So make sure you do as much side missions as you can while playing through this game. After this side mission I go to the next gym which is dark type and led by Vega. But this battle really wasn't that hard, I could take down his first two Pokemon Lipard and Houndour with my Vespiquen and his last two Pokemon Sneasel and Absol with Celio. As I said, I'm not going to be focusing much on the battles in this game, I will be focusing more on the story. So we get the next gym badge and the TM for Thief, and we then move on with our lives. But we get ambushed by the evil team, and Ivory decides to battle us to try and take us out. Her first Pokemon is a Misdreavus, and I start off with Gabite, dual chopping a couple of times easily takes care of it. Next up is Kadabra, my Gabite is able to do a very decent chunk of damage, bringing him down into red health, but then Kadabra takes me down, so I switch in Crobat to finish the job. The last Pokemon is Persian, and together with my Crobat and Vespiquen, I can easily take that down as well. After that, the boss decides to take the matter into his own hands. His name is Zeth, and he takes us on with only an Houndoom. <laughs> I start off with my Salandit, which is able to poison him and set up a couple of nasty plots doing a little bit of chip damage, then I send out Celio and finish off the Mega Hound Doom with a Surf. After the battle, they do decide to take me in and take me back to the lab, but Hoopa comes along and throws me in a portal before they can do it. I arrive in some kind of mine where a hiker comes up and talks to me and he gives me the HM for cut, making me able to continue through the rest of the game. While going through a cave, I capture myself a Noibad because I absolutely absolutely love Noivern, it's one of the best Generation 6 Pokemon in my opinion. I name it Bell, and then my Celio evolves into a Walrein. 
so he's going to be pretty damn beefy. And my Salandid also evolved into a Salazzle. After traveling a little bit more, we find YouTube and Ivory in a dispute, but Ivory uses her Alakazam's powers to throw YouTube out of the way and paralyze him for a few seconds so that she can get away. We help him to get up, but there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with him because he immediately battles us. But his team is very weak with a Trumbeak, a Swinup, and a Larvitar, which my Warring can easily take care of with an Aurora Beam and a few Surfs. While I was in that cave, I also evolved my Gabite into a Garchomp, so that is a big upgrade as well. And we then reach the next city, where we have to battle our third Gym Leader, which specializes in Flying-type Pokémon. And her name is Alice. Her first Pokemon is a Dodrio, but my Vespican can easily take care of that with a couple of Power Gems. Then Gliscor comes out, my Walrein can take care of that with an Aurora Beam. Then Minior comes out, which my Walrein can also take care of with a couple of Surfs. And finally is a Pinsir. I'm pretty sure this isn't a Flying type. Or did I miss something? So he takes care of my wall rain, but my Crobat can come in and take him down with two air slashes. Now we do have three gym badges, and that means that we can move on through the story just a little bit more. We arrive in the next town and we see that Ivory and Jax are having a fight, and Alakazam decides to throw Jax across a lake. This is one of the only Pokemon games where the Pokemon actually harm people, I'm pretty sure. After that, Ivory goes to Route 9, and then Jax comes back and he asks us to help him out at Route 9 because he can't take on all of the shadow grounds by himself. So we agree, and while I was making my way there, my Noivat evolved into a Noivern. We then arrive at the house on Route 9, but it's already invaded by the Team Shadow Grunts, so we have to team up with Jax once again to take on Ivory and a Grunt. This battle was once again not really that hard since she has an Alakazam, an Incineroar, and a Mismagus, and with my Garchomp and his Staraptor, we can easily overpower them. But even after all that effort, they still shoot us through one of Hoopa's rings, getting us out of the house so that they can easily get away. We meet up with Jax, and he tells us that the police won't believe believe that there is a shadowy organization, so this is up on us once again, since in Pokemon games the police is always useless. It tells us that we have to go and beat up the Falshore Gym so that we can use the HM for strength. But before we do that, we have to beat up some girl down at the mansion to get ourselves a Mega Ring because she's the Mega Guru or something. So that's exactly what we do, and then we head to Mount Thunderclap to try and save Zapdos, but before we do that, I capture an Electabuzz in there, because I absolutely love Electabuzz. We eventually reach the top of Mount Thunderclap, and we see that Marlin is once again there trying to capture Zapdos. Of course he succeeds with his Master Ball, and he then challenges us to a Pokemon battle, and he starts off with a Zapdos, so that's not too great. Luckily my Roll Rain is strong enough to take on the Zapdos with a couple of Blizzards and Aurora Beams, taking him down rather quickly. Next up is a Dusclops, I'm able to hit a couple of Surfs, doing a little bit of chip damage, but then he switches in Cacturn. It takes me down with a single needle arm. So I go into Noivern, taking down Cacturn with an Air Slash. Dusclops comes back out, I'm able to hit one Dragon Pulse, but then he gets the better of me with an Ice Punch. So I send out Jaws to finish Dusclops with Crunch. He then sends out his Crocodile, and because of the Intimidate, I decide to switch on into Vespiquen, but he went for a Stone Hitch, taking down Vespiquen in one hit. I then switch back into my Garchomp. I try to go for Bad Tantrum, but he switches in Zubat to cancel that out, so I crunch it twice to take that thing down as well, and then he sends out Crocodile once more. The Crocodile is able to overpower Garchomp, but my Crobat is able to take down Crocodile with a couple of Leech Fangs. After the fight, Marlon leaves and he of course tells us to not play the hero, but we're gonna of course ignore that and do it anyway. After traveling a bit further, we run into YouTube once again, and he of course wants a battle. His team isn't that strong, but he does have a Porion which was able to take down Crobat, but Garchomp finished that thing off with two Earthquakes. He then had a Pile of Swine which took down my Garchomp with a nice fang, but my Salazzle scorched it with its flamethrowers. Toucanon decided to take down my Salazzle with a Rock Blast. It also took out my Vespiquen with a Rock Blast. My Noivern was able to hit a Boom Burst while also getting hit with a Rock Blast. Then I switched in Wall Rain, finished it off with Aurora Beam, and the final Pokemon was Puyopitar, which we can take down with Surf. After defeating him, we do get the Mega Stone for Garchomp, so that is going to be super useful. We then skip to a cutscene on a beach with Marlin, and he's uh, having cold feet about the whole operation that he's in. So he gets sent into a portal by one of the grunts because they don't want him to get cold feet. I mean, he can of course put on some socks, but that was the worst joke ever. We travel further through the desert and reach the next 
next town where we meet up with Looker and Jax. We're talking about the ruins of Void, but before we can finish our sentences, we get thrown into a portal by Hoopa once again, together with Jax. And this coincidentally brings us to the ruins of Void, where we actually have to be. We see that the shadows are already here, and they decide to blow up the mountain, causing us to not be able to join them up there. So we have to go through the cave of ruins ourselves by doing a puzzle that has a hoopa in it which opens up a door. We see a clay doll banging his head against the wall. And then we actually have to fight the three legendary beasts in order to progress. I actually tried to capture Raikou, that's why I'm doing such stupid stuff here, but we aren't able to capture these. After finding out, I decide to take out Raikou, Entei and Suicune, the clay doll decides to let us go free. And then we reach the end of the ruins. We meet up with Zeph, the Shadow Grunts, and also Ivory. They say that Marlin isn't here because he of course got thrown into a portal by one of the Grunts, and they don't know about it. With or without Marlin, it doesn't matter, he is going to unfold his plan here right now anyway. He throws out Zabdos, Moltres, and Articuno. With these three legendary birds and the Prison Stone, he can free the unrelenting force. So he has to say these sentences in order to bring Bring out Hoopa. After he's done, everything works. The bottle where Hoopa was once sealed in pops up, but nothing actually happens. That's when the guy from the beach walks up. He says that his name is Aklov, and Ziff asks him what he did in order for the experiment to fail. Aklov answers with that he hasn't done anything wrong, and that there was one key part missing. For this power to work, there has to be a Pokemon where the power can go into. But Aklov decided to delete this from all the crucial files that Ziff had, so that he himself could fulfill the summoning of the Hoopa Unbound form himself. Zeph isn't having any of it and he throws out his Hound Doom, but Aklov throws out his Hoopa and he sends Hound Doom away through a portal. He then explains that Hoopa saved us all this time by its own accord, not by Aklov's will, because the only thing that Aklov wants is me out of the picture. Because apparently we are a Hoopa's rightful trainer. So Zeph steps out of the way and Aklov summons the unbound form of Hoopa. After summoning him, Zeph asks if they may be able to work together because they might have a common goal. But Aklov tells him that they have no common goal because he is one of the descendants of the king of the Colossian king that started the Great War all these years ago. He wants to start up the ultimate weapon once again so that his suffering can finally end. He calls out Zeph for having no ambitions and disbands the shadows and creates a new group called the Light of Ruin. He then says that he's finally going to take care of me and orders Hoopa to summon a legendary Pokemon and that one is Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh can take care of my Noivern but I then send out Walrein taking him down with a Surf. That was a pretty easy legendary Legendary battle. After defeating Ho-Oh, he orders him to summon another legendary Pokemon, this time it's of course Lugia, so I can take him on with my Mega Garchomp by using Crunch, which defeats it very quickly. After defeating Lugia as well, he orders Hoopa to seal me in the remains of the broken prison bottle, which is a place that I can normally never escape from. But while we're in there, we meet up with Marlin, which has been sent to the same place as us. He tells us that we're in a place called the Judgment Zone. Here is where the judgment gets passed on by the one that's sealed inside the prison bottle. This place reflects your home, so for me it's the snow because I've always lived in the snow, but for Marlin, he is actually in the sea from a place that has too much water. Hoenn? It has to be, right? He then also tells us that everything that he and his boys have been doing isn't actually for bad intent. But it's all too late for that now. And then the prison bottle spirit shows up to pass on judgment to us. He says that Marlon actually deserves to be in here, but he has some stuff that he has to take care of on Earth first to clean his soul and that his and to determine of the souls hidden in your shadow warriors. Up until this point we have no idea what that means, but you will find out later. He sends Marlon back. We also get sent back to the normal world with the same objective as Marlon, stop the tormenting of souls. Our next objective is down at the volcano, so that's exactly where I'm headed to right now. We arrive there and see the second gym leader Vega talking with Marlon and some team Light Grunt. And here it's revealed that Vega was actually working for the Shadow Warriors, but he has now stepped over to the light side, which is Aklov's team. After they argue for a bit, they decide to have a 
battle, so I team up with Marlon and fight Vega and a team Light Grunt. But this battle was way too easy, I just earthquake most of his team with Garchomp, while my good friend Marlon here killed a lot of his Pokemon as well with Crocodile. Eventually I did have to switch into Salazzle to take down the rest of his Pokemon with Flamethrowers. After defeating them, Vega tells them to go back to their hideout back in Vivil Town. Luckily Marlon can keep Vega from escaping, but all of the team like runs do get away. They then run off and Vega is actually trapped by Marlon. He decides to jump into lava, but luckily Hoopa is there to save him. We also want to jump into the portal, but before we can, he comes back out and tells us that Groudon is actually sleeping here. So Vega uses the red orb to awaken Groudon, and he orders him to attack us. I defeat Groudon rather quickly with my Noivern combined with Crobat's air slashes. And after that, Marlon goes back to his base down at the icy mountains and he tells us not to follow him but of course we are going to follow him because we have to save the world. While in the base we actually find Marlon's clothes which makes us able to go through the base without being noticed by any of the grunts. Without having to battle anyone in here we can easily reach the end of the hideout where we meet up with Zeph and Marlon. We decide to eavesdrop on their conversation and we hear that Ivory has actually left Zeph to go and work for Aklov. Ziv then explains everything to Marlon that has happened, why the shadows have disbanded and what Aklov has done. We then also find out that the reason why they are actually doing this is to bring back their children. Marlon then also explains that I have been sealed with him into the prison bottle and that's when I step in. This makes Zeph furious because he is still mad at me for destroying his whole operation. He kind of blames me for that. So without thinking, he challenges me to a Pokemon battle with his full team now. His team consists of a Mightyena, which he switches out into Gengar, which he can evolve into Mega Gengar. So after Mega Gengar takes down my Noivern, I switch in Garchomp and take down the Gengar with a couple of crunches. Mightyena comes back out, so I switch in Crobat and take it down with a Leech Fang, then his Exploit is up next. Luckily my Crobat is pretty strong, so I confuse it and take him down with a couple of cross poisons, then he has a Decidueye as well, but my Salazzle takes care of that with a flamethrower, next up is Drapion, but my Salazzle is too overpowered with its flamethrowers, so we can take him down as well, and that's that. After the battle, Marlon says that he is not supposed to fight me because I'm not the enemy. After Zef accepts that, we learn about an attack that they're planning on the Team Light's base. They're going to use the Shadow Warriors to attack it. We also know that Aklov has gone to Hoenn to try out Hoopa's power over there before he uses it in this region. So we now have time to attack their base while he isn't around. Marlon suggests that we help him, but Zeph isn't quite keen on it. Eventually he does accept it, but before we go ahead and attack their base, Marlon explains to me what these Shadow Warriors are and what their purpose actually is. 16 years ago, Zeph called Marlon and his wife Ivory to the Boreas region. Both of them are scientists and all three of them have lost their children in the past. So Zeph needs their expertise to try and bring back their children. At first Marlon and Ivory are having a doubts because they have already tried it in the past and it never worked. But Zeph had an amazing idea. He wanted to ask Arceus to bring their souls back but that is sadly enough not possible. So they had to take a more scientific approach. So what they decided to do was fuse a Pokemon with human DNA and that created these shadow warriors that we've seen in the past. And via this process, they wanted to bring back their children. But it didn't go as planned as one of the scientists named Aros was killed. And he was also the trainer at the beginning that had control over Arceus. So after he died, they decided to go ahead and make more of these shadow warriors, but after they found out that they have no memory of their former lives, they had to take another different approach. So what they decided to do was bring back the ultimate weapon from Kalos to try and restore their children that way. And then we of course catch up to the present where they capture all of the legendary birds to try and bring out Hoopa to bring the ultimate weapon to this region. After that, Marlon once again asks us if we still want to help them take down the Society of Light. And we also find out that we are Aron's son, which is of course the Arceus trainer that died by one of the Shadow Warriors. Marlon and Zev then decide to go to the hideout already, but we can't reach that yet because we first need another gym badge. Luckily, this gym badge specializes in electric types, so I absolutely destroyed him with my Garchomp. 
No other Pokemon had to be used for this battle. After getting the Zabatch, we meet up with YouTube once again, we fill him in on everything that's happened, and then Luker comes along as well. We fill him in on everything as well, and him and YouTube decide to go with us to Vivil Town. Which is very nice because we are going to be needing all the backup that we can get. We then reach Vivil Town and go straight to their hideout, which is being guarded by a grunt. He tells us that the entire base is going to be full of grunts that we have to fight. But right as we are about to barge in, the ship of the Shadow Team comes along and bombards the base. They make a hole in the mountain and sail the ship into the hideout. While we're on top, YouTube takes care of the light grunt and we can enter the hideout as well. As there are grunts waiting for us at the other side of the door, a shadow warrior barges in and attacks them. So they open the door and barge into us, and this is our first real fight with a shadow warrior. They get a buff in every stat and are pretty damn strong, and they barely have any weaknesses. Luckily though, with my Garchomp combined with Crobat, we can take them down with a couple of Outrages and Air Slashes. After defeating them, we set their souls free, and we are free to explore the rest of the hideout. We have to beat up a couple more Shadow Grunts in order to get passwords from the Team Light Grunts, which we have to give into a terminal which we can open up and then we can reach Aklov. Eventually after beating all of them and getting every single letter, we get the password which is Aglov's name himself. YouTube then comes along as well and joins us and we barge into the room. We see that Aklov is nowhere to be seen and we only see Ivory. She now works for Aklov because he promised her that she could use the ultimate weapon to bring back their son. She will literally destroy an entire region just to bring back one of her children. That's kind of messed up. After they argue for a bit about how this is totally ridiculous and that she shouldn't do this, they decide to send a Shadow Warrior onto her to hold her down. But then at that moment, Aklov arrives and sends the Shadow Warrior away with one of Hoopa's portals. And then Aklov jumps in as well. Ivory explains what has happened, that they crashed their boat into their hideout, and Aklov goes crazy. Because all of his data for the ultimate weapon has been corrupted. As Zeph tries to attack Aklov, Hoopa sends him into a portal as well. Marlon steps up and tells Aklov what a horrible person he is, and then he of course gets yeeted into a portal as well. YouTube steps up too, and he gets yeeted as well. But they have all been sent to places where they can't be harmed, because that's the deal that he made with Ivory. So now it's up to us to take on Aklov in a Pokemon battle, of course. His first Pokemon is a Klefki, but my Garchomp can take care of that with a couple of Earthquakes rather easily. Next up is Togekiss, so I switch in Walrein, and I decide to set up a Hail so that my Blizzards won't ever miss, but we get put to sleep, and my Blizzard barely does any damage once it hits. So Walrein gets taken out by a couple of Aura Spheres. I then send in Sassy, go for the Venoshock, but the Togekiss hangs on, and my Sassy goes down. I then switch in Crobat, who confuses the Togekiss with a Confuse Ray, and I then kill it with two more Cross Poisons. Next up is Hoopa, so I confuse that thing as well, and then go for the Leech Fang to take him down from almost full health. Forges is up next, so I keep confusing it with Crobat and also cross poison it a bunch of times until it eventually faints via poison damage. Last up is Pre Marina, so I confuse that thing as well and take it down with cross poison once again. After that, Aklov gets mad at Hoopa and orders it to send me away to the Distortion World. While arriving in the Distortion World, we also see that Jax is here. He's been gone for quite a long time. After filling in Jax on everything that happened and him telling me his story, I decide to clear out the Distortion World, which took me an hour because there is so many puzzles in here. Luckily, there were some guides on YouTube because I couldn't do this by myself. After clearing these puzzles though, we have to fight Giratina, which is totally easy, no problems whatsoever, and he is so kind enough to send us back to the normal world. After arriving in the Rift Cave, we head back to Looker at the Team Light hideout. But we're too late, the warehouse has already been abandoned, they have already left for the ultimate weapon. Jackson Looker explained to me that time in the distortion world passes way slower than in this world, that's why everything has gone so quickly in here and everything was so slow in there. Looker tells us that they tried to ambush the Team Light grunts, but they teleported away of course with Hoopa's rings, and then YouTube comes along. Apparently Hoopa sent him to the Crystal Peak, where their new hideout is, and also the location 
of the ultimate weapon. So everyone heads on to Crystal Peak, but I of course can't do that yet. I have to get a couple more gym badges first. So I arrive in Antasis City, which is a city full of thugs, and of course one of the gym leaders there is a thug himself the biggest thug of them all. He specializes in fighting types, which is honestly not really that hard for my team to deal with. He starts off with a Conkelder, but after I hit him, he switches into Pangoro. Pangoro can take down Noivern, so I switch in Crobat, confuse him, and take him down with a couple of Air Slashes. Then Conkelder also gets taken care of by an Air Slash. Mega Medicham is up next and that thing shares the same fate as the rest of his Pokémon. He then sends out Machamp, which does not go down by Air Slash, and hits me with a Dual Chop. I can take him down here, but he switches in Hariyama, so I hit an Air Slash, but next turn he hits a Fake Out, taking out Crobat. So I send in my Mega Garchomp, take down Hariyama with two Earthquakes, and last up is Machamp, whom we also finish off with Earthquake. After getting this Gym Badge, go to the docks and we we meet up with Looker and Jax. We have to board a boat here in order for us to go to the place where we actually have to be, so we get the SS ticket and sail to Polder Town together with both of them. As we arrive there, we see that there is a very weird cloud hanging above the Crystal Peak. Looks kinda similar to that one from Sinnoh. Jax and Looker decide to already go to Crystal Peak, but you need Rock Climb in order to get up there, so we have to beat the Polder Town's gym first. So we head there straight away. This gym is led by Tessie and she specializes in the water typing. Her first Pokemon is a Toxapex and I start off with Slazzle and I immediately set up three nasty plots. I take care of the Toxapex with a single Dragon Pulse after that, then Armaldo comes out who hits an Aqua Jet, but my Dragon Pulse also takes him down. Next up is Seismitoad who sadly enough takes down Salazzle, otherwise this probably would have been a sweep. So then I go into Crobat, confuse the Seismitoad and keep on Air Slashing until he eventually faints. Her next Pokemon is a Kingdra which my Crobat can do a little bit of damage on, but Crobat sadly enough does indeed go down once again. So I go into Garchomp, Mega Evolve and kill it with an Outrage. Her last Pokemon is a Mega Gyarados, who does indeed finish off Garchomp. I then switch in Walrein and I set up a Hail so that it would at least do a little bit of chip damage every turn on the Gyarados. Before I could even go for a Blizzard, Walrein is already dead. So I switch in Electabuzz to try and go for the Thunder Wave and paralyze it, but that doesn't work out because we get out Sped and One Shot, so I go into Noivern as my last Pokemon and finish off this Gyarados with a Dragon Pulse and a Boom Burst. We get our Gym Badge and before we move on to the story, I am going to be doing a side mission first, which involved saving an Electivire from a mad scientist, and eventually after defeating this mad scientist, I got myself the Electrizizer, which made me able to evolve my Electabuzz into an Electivire, which is what I wanted all along. We then continue the story and go to Crystal Peak where we meet up with YouTube. We run through the cave together with him and eventually we stumble upon a portal. This portal summons Reshiram and Zekrom, and me and YouTube have to take them on together. Luckily my Mega Garchomp is so strong that it can take both of them down with a single outrage. And just like that we can move on through the cave. After exploring a bit more, we find Marlon and YouTube's sister trapped behind a boulder. Of course YouTube helps him out and Marlon tells us that it isn't going to be easy to get to the top because there are a bunch of grunts guarding it. Of course we are capable to get past them and reach the top either way. At the top we meet up with Jax and Looker who are hiding behind a ledge and checking everything out. Since we're sitting in a good position right now, we can eavesdrop on Aklov's conversation with Ivory. We hear that the weapon is actually ready for activation and that they can press the button whenever they want. We found out that after the war, the Borean citizens brought this ultimate weapon up to the top of Crystal Peak by using the power of Hoopa. Before they activate the weapon, they have to know where Viga is because he apparently is up to something. Eventually, they do get tired of waiting and just before Aklov is about to press the button, Jax jumps in with his Gastrodon and uses Earth Power on the weapon. Aklov wants to send him back with Hoopa's powers to the Distortion World, but Jax holds on with Gastrodon's Sticky Hold ability, which is actually a very, very good use of this ability in this situation. And just as Aklov is about to attack Jax, we jump in and he orders Hoopa to fight me and Ivory to go ahead and activate the weapon. Luckily, Marlon comes along, who is going to keep Ivory chained down. So every single one of us has now got a fight that they have to win in order to save the region. 
So everyone starts fighting. The fight with Hoopa is different than what I would have expected. Because we don't have to fight Hoopa alone. It actually spawns in a Mega Rayquaza. Luckily, they decide to double up on my Electivire, taking him down. But my Mega Garchomp is able to hit an Outrage on the Mega Rayquaza to take him down in one shot. Then I send out Salazzle, who gets absolutely obliterated by a Zen Headbutt. Garchomp hits an Outrage, but it isn't quite enough to take down Hoopa, so I switch in Crobat and take it down with Air Slash, winning the battle. After winning, Vega comes along and he seals Hoopa back in the Prism Bottle. He says that he was a quadruple agent, actually still working for the good guys, and he was just infiltrating the Society of Light thingy to destroy them. He says to Aklov that he has to give up because he's outnumbered and he now does not have the power of Hoopa anymore. But Aklov doesn't care, he is going to activate the weapon anyway. And now everyone thinks that the whole entire region is destroyed. But we soon found out that the weapon was actually sabotaged by Zeph, who has returned with his son. He set the weapon to its original purpose, which was to give life, not to take it and he basically saved the entire region. Ivory then gets mad at him because he thought that he was on her side, but he was just using her as I already expected. He just needed her for the Shadow Warriors. He then flies off and Jax goes after him with his Star Raptor. Zef then explains because he had the remains of his son with him and the ultimate weapon gave life, it actually brought his son back. This made Ivory very sad because she also had the remains of her child with her. She thought that Zeph would have also restored their lives. But he didn't have enough time to do that because otherwise he could not have slipped away from Aklov. Avery then apologizes to YouTube and Marlon, but Marlon explains that they still have two more children, YouTube and their other child, which I don't even know the name of. But Ivory needs to do some thinking and she flies off and tells everyone not to follow her. Then Looker comes along with some police officers to try and round up the entire place here. And he wants to take in Marlon and Zeph, but Zeph tells Looker that they should not be taking in Marlon because he is actually the one who helped them save everything. Looker agrees and they take away Zeph. After that, Zeph hands us the prism bottle which gives us control over Hoopa and his unbound form. So I decide to pick him up immediately, but I'm not going to be adding him to the team until later. We then go and talk to YouTube and he wants one final battle before we move on to the final gym badge. Battle starts off with my Electivire against his two cannon and I'm able to paralyze him and get him down into orange health. Eventually he does switch out into Haxorus, who easily takes down my Electivire with a Dragon Claw. I then go into Garchomp, Mega Evolve and take down Haxorus with Earthquake and then he sends out Mamoswine. So I decide to sacrifice my Noivern, then switch in Sassy. I go for the Flamethrower but he switches in Vaporeon to take the hit like a champ. I hit one more Dragon Pulse before I go down, then I switch in Crobat, Confuse and Poison the Vaporeon with Cross Poison and I keep on hitting it until it eventually goes down by a Leech Fang. He then switches into Cannon, I hit one more Cross Poison before Crobat goes down by Rock Blast, so I switch in my Mega Garchomp and take him down with a Crunch. So then he switches in Mamoswine and I go into Wall Rain to kill it with a couple of Surfs. Last up is this Mega Tyranitar, I hit one more Surf with Wall Rain before getting taken out by Earthquake, so I go into Garchomp and finish this battle with one more Earthquake myself. After the battle, Marlon congratulates his son by telling him that he is proud of him and that is all that YouTube ever had to hear. And everything is all good now. YouTube tells me to finish my gym challenge and take on the Elite Four, so that's what we're gonna be doing now. The last gym leader has a super cool gym. Specialize in bug types, but there is something very special about this gym. Every time you defeat a Pokemon, it goes back to its pre-evolved form. So if I defeat an Iraquanid, it would go into Dewpider first before it actually goes down. I have no idea how the maker of this game did this, but this is an absolutely very cool feature. And I feel like Game Freak should implement this in one of the latest installments of Pokemon. Getting into the fight, I did add Hoopa to the team, but it didn't really do well against this gym. It absolutely got destroyed by the first Pokemon Araquanid. So I switched in 
Golbat, took down the Araquanid, but it evolved into Dewpider, and it took down my Crobat, so my Crobat evolved into Golbat. Or should I say devolved? After that, I hit one more Air Slash, taking down Dewpider, and next up is Fortress. I start off by confusing it, and I switch into Salazzle to take it down with Flamethrower, devolving it into Pineco, and then also taking down this Pineco with two more Flamethrowers while it sets up a layer of Toxic Spikes and sends out its next Pokemon, Drapion. So Sassy keeps Flamethrowing the Drapion, taking it down into a Skorupi, then Flamethrowing it once more and taking him down as well. Next up is Butterfree, and I keep on Flamethrowing in that thing as well until it eventually is a Metapod and a Caterpie taking all of them down with flamethrowers. Sadly enough, my Salazzle did de-evolve into a Salandit, and last up is a Scizor who can take me down with a Bullet Punch. So I go into my Electivire, decide to paralyze the Scizor and then take him down with two Thunderbolts, devolving him into Scyther. The Scyther then hits my Electivire, taking him down and devolving into Electabuzz, and then one more Thunderbolt finishes this gym battle off and we get our final gym badge. We then travel through Victory Road, which had a very annoying ice puzzle, but I got through that and reach the Indigo Plateau. In this game, you can take on the Elite Four in any order you want. So I start off by taking on Annabelle, which specializes in fairy types. She starts off with a Carbink, and I start off with my Sassy. I set up three nasty plots, but then she switches in Azumarill, so my Flamethrower barely does anything, but I can finish it off with another Venoshock. She switches back into Carbink. It is able to do a decent amount of damage against me, but a few Venoshocks later, and it's down. The next two Pokemon, Sylveon and Togekiss, both went down with Venoshox, and last up is Mega Mawile, who sadly enough gets the better of me by using Sucker Punch, so I switch in Garchomp, Mega Evolve, and finish this battle with an Earthquake. That's the first Elite Four member out of the way, time to head on to the second one, who is named Mole Man. Of course, he is going to specialize in bug types. No, it's ground types. He leads off with Excredil and Flygon, and I lead off with Walrein and Sassy. I go for the Blizzard with Walrein and switch out Salazzle for Crobat, because I know that they're gonna go for a ground type move. Luckily, my Crobat absorbs Flygon's Earth Power and my Blizzard takes down Flygon, but the Excredil did protect itself. Next up, they send out Sand Slash, so I go for the Blizzard and a Confuse Ray, but they switch out Excredil for Quacksire. Sand Slash does go for Earthquake, hitting the Quacksire and my Wall Rain, but my Blizzard freezes it after that. I then go for a couple more Air Slashes and one more Blizzard to take down the Sand Slash and do a bit of chip damage on Quacksire. So he sends out his Excredil once again, which takes down my Wall Rain sadly enough, and my Crobat hits an Air Slash on the Quacksire, which literally does no damage. So I decide to go into Jaws, and they heal up their Quacksire, I Mega Evolve, go for the Earthquake, take down the Excadrill, and do about half of the Quacksire's health, but my Crobat is down as well by a Rock Slide. I then send in Hoopa, and he sends in Gliscor, I go for an Earthquake to take down the Quacksire, and my Hoopa as well, and the Gliscor goes for an Earthquake as well. I then switch in Salazzle, go for Outrage with Garchomp, and combine that with with a flamethrower of Sassy to take down Gliscor and win my second Elite Four member battle. So now we move on to the third one, which is Elias, the ghost type specialist. He starts off with a Mimikyu and I start off with my Salazzle. I set up a nasty plot while it sets up a Swords Dance, and I then go for the Flamethrower, and it goes for a Shadow Claw. I try to go for another one, but he switches in Chandelure, taking it with its Flash Fire ability. I then go for the Dragon Pulse, and because I'm holding a King's Rock, I flinch the Chandelure as well, so he is forced to switch back into Mimikyu. As I try to go for another Flamethrower on the Mimikyu, he switches back into Chandelure, so I then go for the Dragon Pulse, finally taking down Chandelure. I then switch out Slazzle because I will be needing him later, for Hoopa. I sacrifice Hoopa and switch in Electivire to Thunder Wave and Thunderbolt the Mimikyu before going down to a boosted Play Rough. I then switch in my Garchomp Mega Evolve and finish off the Mimikyu with a couple of Earthquakes. Next up is H Slash, who I also keep earthquaking until it eventually faints, but it was able to get me down into red health, but I still won this battle. Next up is Banette, so I try to go for a crunch, but it barely does any damage. Then I go for the earthquake, but it predicted that somehow and switched into Trevenant, which I also hit with another crunch after that, but it killed me with a horn leech. So I go into Crobat, confuse the Trevenant, and hit it with a couple of air slashes until it eventually switches out into Banette. After hitting three more air slashes, the Banette finally those down as well. And last up is of course is Trevenant, which we now take out with one more Air Slash. And now that is three Elite Four members out of the way, 
time to head on to the final one, which is Penny, and she is a dragon type specialist. She even has a dragon outfit on, which does look a little bit silly. Anyway, this is another double battle, and she starts off with Tyrantrum and Gudra. So I start off by going for a Dragon Pulse on Tyrantrum and a Blizzard with Walrein taking out Tyrantrum with both of them combined. We also got hit by a Rock Slide, but we did survive that. The Gudra then went for a Muddy Water, taking down Salazzle. So I switch in Electivire and I go for the Aurora Beam on Gudra and Thunder Wave on the next Pokemon, Kamo. Oh, the Gudra goes for the Thunderbolt, taking out Walrein, and the Kamo O goes for Clanging Scales on Electivire, which lowers its defense. I think I'm switching Crobat. I Thunder Wave the Gudra and go for Air Slash on the Kamo O once again, almost doing half of its health. Sadly enough, Gudra's Muddy Water took down Electivire. I then switch in Hoopa, go for Psychic on the Kamo O and Cross Poison on the Gudra, but Kamo O does faint while Gudra is left with a little bit of HP. Next on out is Hydragon. I decide to set up a nasty plot with my Hoopa and I go for the Leech Fang with my Crobat on the Hydragon. Next turn, I go for Shadow Ball on Gudra, Leech Fang again on the Hydragon, but none of them faint. As the Hydragon sets up a Tailwind, I decide to set up a Trick Room. You get hit with a Dark Pulse, but my Crobat finishes off Hydragon with a Leech Fang. And her last Pokemon is a Sceptile. A Mega Sceptile, might I add. So I go for a Psychic on it, which actually one-shots it, while Crobat is able to hit a Leech Fang on Gudra. I then keep Leech Fanging and using Psychic on the Gudra until it eventually faints, but not before it takes down my Crobat. But with that, we now have defeated the four Elite Four members, time for us to head on to the Champion Battle. But as it turns out, there is actually no Champion in this region, so since we defeated the Elite Four, we should be Champion right now, right? Nope. Jax comes along and challenges me for the champion spot because he also defeated the Elite Four. Now we finally get to fight against the man that has helped us throughout the entire story. So let's see if my team is up to snuff. This is once again a double battle as he starts off with Staraptor and Golurk. I start off with Garchomp and Walrein. I Mega Evolve and go for the Crunch on Golurk and use Blizzard with Walrein as the Staraptor uses U-Turn and switches into Gastrodon. Luckily my Blizzard Crunch combo is enough to take down Golurk and do chip damage on Gastrodon. But after that he sends out Staraptor again and goes for U-turn once more as I go for Outrage and Blizzard combo once again. He sends out his Magnezone and I do a little bit of damage with Outrage and Surf but my Outrage is pretty weak because the Staraptor actually did intimidate me twice. The turn after that I hit one more Surf with Walrein before getting taken out by a Thunderbolt from Magnezone and my Garchomp gets taken out by an Icy Wind from Gastrodon. Then I send out Salazzle and Crobat. I try to go for Flamethrower on Magnezone but it protects itself but Crobat is able to take down Gastrodon on with Air Slash. The next Pokemon is a Pyroar, but my Flamethrower gets rid of Magnezone and Crobat hits an Air Slash on the Pyroar. The next turn, Staraptor comes back out again as I hit a Flamethrower almost taking it down and another Air Slash on Pyroar as well, but of course Staraptor is going to U-turn into Salamance. Next turn he Mega Evolves his Salamance and also heals up Pyroar, so I go for the Dragon Pulse on Mega Salamance and tank a Dragon Claw as a champ. Crobat once again goes for the air slashes on Pyroar and two more Dragon Pulses and Salamance is out of here. The last two Pokemon on his list are Pyroar and Staraptor. So I try to take them down in one turn, but the Staraptor used Protect, so the first turn Pyroar goes down and the second one Staraptor goes down, and we are now champion of the Boris region. Jax takes us to the Hall of Fame, where we are introduced to our team for one last time. And this is where I'm going to end off the video because it's already over 50 minutes long, but that's because this game is super long to play playthrough as well. From what I've heard, there is still a lot of post-game content, so if you guys want to see another video where I go over the post-game content of Pokemon Unbound, definitely let me know in the comments down below because I would love to do it. This game is absolutely amazing. It is in my top three favorite ROM hacks of all time. So I highly recommend that you check this game out because I haven't had this much fun since I made my Team Rocket Edition video while playing Pokemon. It can appeal to multiple audiences because you can play it very easily by just playing on casual or you can crank up the difficulty to give yourself a challenge. And added to that, the story of this game is very, very in-depth. There is a lot of sight content that I haven't even completed or touched and I've already spent more than 20 hours into this game. I highly recommend checking this game out once again. It is so good. And with that out of the way, I of course want to thank the membership and Patreon supporters as always. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It really helps me out. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links 
in the description. Also, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. My name is Wiggle and I'll see you guys next time.